Good grief. When this is the top search engine hit for Commodore Nib file, it's time for a video. Today on Basic Bytes, I will not only be explaining what exactly a Nib file is, but I will also be showing you how to convert one into a disk image that you can use with your Commodore 64 or C64 emulator via the command line and using Windows File Explorer drag and drop. Welcome, it's JC at Basic Bytes, and today we are talking about nib files. So, what the heck is a nib file anyway? Well, put very simply, it's a nibbled disk image of a Commodore floppy disk, which leads to the question, what exactly is a nibbled image? I will try to keep the explanation brief at perhaps the expense of overgeneralizing, because this is old hat to anyone who copied floppy disks back in the day, but essentially there were two methods of copying a floppy disk. You could use a standard disk copier, or you could use a nibbler. The standard disk copier would copy all of the standard tracks and sectors and the data within them, and this was completely unsuitable for copying most retail floppy disks and would not produce a working copy. You've probably heard mentioned in many places that the Commodore 1541 floppy drive was not a mere peripheral but a computer unto itself, and that is entirely true. Getting beyond standard commands like load and save, if you instructed that drive directly, you could get it to write all manner of weird, non-standard data to non-standard locations in non-standard ways on the surface of a floppy disk, and this was in fact the basis of most disk copy protection from vendors that did not want you to be able to make a working copy. So what the Nibbler program would do is read, to the best of its ability, consecutively every single bit on every single track and simply copy it all regardless of whether that data was in a standard format or not, and mileage with this would vary, and sometimes using the nibbler was still not sufficient to make a working copy, and there were actions you had to take after the fact, but that's a whole other subject. Back to the nib files. These are a relatively modern sort of file that are generally produced via hardware solutions such as a Zoom 1541 or a Zoom Floppy or any of their predecessors, which allow you to hook up a 1541 or 1571 drive to a modern PC and with certain modifications to the drive, modern PC tools can be used to nibble disks at lightning speed, this is one of the best solutions for anyone that is archiving a large collection of Commodore floppy disks. Not only has this overcome most copy protection hurdles, I believe the claim is that it's about 95% successful at making working copies of copy protected disks, but of course these efforts at archival are getting more and more important as all magnetic media will eventually degrade and fail. So the nib file can be thought of as an archival image of a Commodore floppy disk. It isn't a virtual disk image in the same way that a D64 or a G64 is, and in the remainder of this video I'm going to show you how to convert one to the other so that collections of nib files that you may find on the internet can be used with your Commodore or C64 emulator. So the first thing you want to do is head over to the Commodore 64 Preservation Project at 
c64preservation.com, and once you're at the homepage, scroll down until you find Nib Tools on the left-hand menu and click on it. You will be presented with a page of information about Nib Tools. Scroll down again, and there's this link. You can always download the latest binary builds here. Click on that link, and you'll be put into a folder of files. And there are two options here. Virtually anyone using a modern 64-bit operating system is going to want to download the AMD 64 version. However, if you have an older version of Windows and it is a 32-bit installation for whatever reason, then you download the Win32 package. Once you have downloaded the zip file that is appropriate to your system, simply extract it into a folder at a convenient location of your choosing on your hard drive. We are now at the command prompt, and I'm going to begin with a command line demonstration before showing you the drag and drop, because this gives better insight into what is going on behind the scenes. If we look at the contents of this folder, you'll notice that we have a bunch of executable utilities. We have a readme.txt. We've also got this disk.nib. That was not part of the original zip file, but rather that's one of my own disk images that I have added to this folder for demonstration purposes. And the tool that we are concerning ourselves with is nibconv.exe, the nib converters. So let's just run that for some more information. And nibconv converts a CBM disk image from one format to another. Copyright Peter Ritwage at C64 Preservation Project. And great work on this because, of course, such utilities are becoming more and more important as the number of five and a quarter inch floppy disks in the world is now on permanent decline. So, uh, Simply, we run nibconv. There are optional options. Your in file is the nib file, and your out file is whatever you want to call it and convert it to. So, supported file extensions for the input file. There's our nib, and supported file extensions for the output file. It will output in D64 or G64, and don't do this. D64 for original disk images should be avoided. You essentially always want to output in G64. The D64 only contains the data that is stored in the standard track and sector locations, whereas the G64 contains all of the extra information that could be recorded off the magnetic media. So a G64 is a more full and accurate representation of the original disk that it was imaged from, and in fact, copy-protected software, by and large, will not function if you convert your nib into a D64 because you are losing the extra information that is needed in order to get that disk image to work. Going further, there are a bunch of advanced options which I will not cover in this video, although I often like to turn on the V for verbose switch, which simply outputs more detailed information about the conversion. I think it's interesting sometimes for software to give us more information of what's going on behind the scenes. So, we run nibconv. I'm going to turn on the optional verbose option so it gives us more info. You don't have to do that. And I'm going to convert disk.nib into disk.g64 and run it. And it gives us an extensive report because we've turned on the V option. So it loads in the nib file, parses it, aligns all of the tracks, writes out our g64 file, and successfully saved g64 file. If we look at our 
contents of our directory now. There it is, disk.g64 converted from disk.nib. And just for the sake of demonstration, I am also going to tell it to convert to a d64 and watch what happens. We get quite a different output with the D64, but right at the bottom, it gives you the warning. Converting to D64 is a lossy conversion. All individual sector header and gap information is lost. It is suggested that you use the G64 format for most disks. And if we look at our directory, there. The D64 does have the 170 or so kilobytes of basic information that can be stored on one side of a 1541 floppy disk, but notice the G64 contains about 100 kilobytes of extra information that was recorded off the surface of that disk. And the extra 100 or so kilobytes difference between a D64 and a G64 on modern storage media is absolutely negligible. It's also one of the hints that I use in my own disk image collection that if I see a G64, that may be something that once resided on an original physical disk. And now for the grand finale. Are you ready for this? We are back in Windows Explorer, and this is how you create a disk image with drag and drop. You take your nib file, you drag it onto nibconv.exe, and you drop it. <laughs> That's it. That's really it. And I don't know if this is the most or least impressive part of this entire video, because I can tell you that these being generally command line tools, it was not at all immediately obvious to me when I downloaded this package that it actually supported uh, drag and drop functionality, but apparently it does, and hey, it converts to G64 by default, so Bob's your uncle. I hope you found this useful, and as a closing thought, while some have obviously been slightly confused by the nib files and what they are, uh, I personally prefer and enjoy when I find disk collections archived in this format online, despite the fact that there is an extra step to convert them into a G64, because having the nib file is like having the original master image of a disk, and it's also your backup image of that disk. So if you happen to do something down the line and you completely corrupt or mess up your G64 in some way, well, just go back to your stash of nib files and simply make another one. It's that easy. If you found today's video informative or entertaining, please like and subscribe to Basic Bytes for more. You can also visit us online at basicbytes.ca. Thank you for watching.